Hi, this is Jim Wright, and in this Post Builder lesson, we'll cover more TCL command structure. Specifically, our lesson plan involves looking at the if command, else if, if then else, and also nested ifs. We will also look at variables as arrays. As a reminder, this lesson builds on the previous lessons. We've created a post processor for a 3 axis mill using the Fanuc 6M control. The first logic statement for TCL that I would like to take a look at is also the easiest one to understand. It's called the if statement and it looks something like what you see on the screen if whatever is contained in these curly braces is true then we will do this in other words we will only do this if this is true if this isn't true we will ignore this and we will go on to the next line of the code so I have some examples there on the screen if space 1 is greater than 0, which of course is true, 1 is greater than 0, space, we will do this, mom output literal, anything that's enclosed in these double quotes, 1 is greater than 0. That's a fairly easy one to understand. The next example I have involves uh, using an embedded command inside of the if statement. So we start out with if, and then inside of the if portion of the statement we have these square braces, and then we're using a command called info. Remember the, the syntax for commands is the command name, and then arguments, arguments, arguments. So this particular command says info exists. So the first argument is exists. So it's looking to see if this particular variable exists. So post builder checks to see if the variable mom machine time exists. Then if it does, it does two things. It sets the variable time to the value of mom machine time and then it outputs the value of time. And then this closing brace closes off this opening brace over here. A modification of the if statement is the if-else command structure. And the way the if-else command structure works is, if this is true, we will do this, same as we saw with the if statement, but then there's the addendum on the end. If this isn't true, we will do this different task. The example I have here, if this will evaluate to true. Mom output literal 1 is greater than 0. And the else clause, mom output literal 1 is not greater than 0. Now the way the logic in this if else statement is built, this portion of the if statement will never ever execute because 1 is always greater than 0. So when you're building your if commands or if else commands, you need to be aware that you can actually build logic that is, in fact, illogical. Another variation on the if command is the if else command structure. And I have a couple of examples here. If this is true, do this, we've seen this before, we understand that part. The new part is else if. So instead of just doing whatever's in the next set of curly braces, we ask another question. And if that is true, then we do this alternate task. If that's not true, we go to the next else if. We ask another question, do this different task. Now we actually have a better command structure to do this type of logic and I'll show you that later on. I don't recall that I've ever used nested else ifs like this. 
Anytime you use a nested if or a nested anything, uh, you've got to be very clever with how you build the logic. And finally, we have just a just a plain nested if. So if this is true, and if this is true, and if this is true, then we will finally do this. So we're basically saying if all these things are true, we will do this. We have a little bit better way to do that, and I'll show you that a little bit later on. So I have used nested ifs before, but once again, you have to be very careful of the logic. So let's get into Post Builder and do some practical examples of the if statement. So in this first scenario, we're going to go back to the custom command that we built in the last lesson about machining time. And what we'll do is we will only output hours if they are greater than zero. Let's get started. I'm inside of the Program and Toolpath tab in the Program sub tab, and I'm at the Program End sequence where we created this custom command in the previous lesson about outputting the machining time. I'm going to open up that custom command. I will open up that custom command. And what I would like to do is only output the variable hours if hours is greater than zero. So let's build an if statement to do that. If left curly brace, let's check on the variable hours. if hours greater than zero right curly brace to close the if portion of the statement left curly brace to open the uh, next portion we will output mom output literal estimated machining time hours minutes Usually I will indent the closing brace of an if statement to indicate that it's subordinate to the if statement. So what do we do if hours are less than zero? So what do we do if hours are not greater than zero? Well, we still want to output minutes. So I'll use my else command, opening curly brace, go to the next line. Oh, and by the way, uh, I've sometimes run into trouble with TCL if I try to go to the next line without putting the curly brace here. In other words, if I had the else statement, but then I put the curl opening curly brace down here, I've run into trouble because TCL looks at the end of the line statement sometimes as the end of a statement not always but sometimes so generally speaking if you have an else statement or an if statement you want to make sure the opening curly brace is on the same line so what is the else And then we can just copy and paste and get rid of the hours portion. Close off the else statement with another curly brace. Notice that as I open and close curly braces, that it will indicate what it's attached to. One of the common mistakes that I've run into when I'm building a if command or, or a proc or a custom command is that I have the wrong number of opening and closing braces so it's generally a good idea to count them. So I've got one, two, three that are open, 
one, two, three that are closed. Okay, the opening and the closing ones are all equal. I should be okay. We'll save this. Return to Cam Express. And let's post process one single operation that should be less than an hour. Estimated machining time, two minutes, no mention of hours. Now let's check for the alternate case. Make the program longer. If you remember from our previous lesson, the total estimated machining time for this was over two hours. So we've used our if statement to eliminate hours if it was less than one, if it was not greater than zero. Variables can be modified so that they hold multiple values. When they do that, they're called an array. For example, if I want to find the value of x, that is actually a variable called mompause zero. But if I wanted to find the value of y, that's mompause one, and it logically follows that mompause two would be z. When we get into four and five axis post processors later on, we will look at mompause three and mompause four. So let's look at an example of using an array to output some kind of message to the NC machinist so that we're classifying the X position with a nested if. For this demonstration example, I'll go into the motion area of this dialog and I'll actually put a custom command before each linear move. Custom command. I'll add that before this line of output. I'll call it query position. First, we need to bring in the mom pause variable. Next we'll create our if statement. The value of mom pause, the value of mom pause zero, remember we said was x. So if that is less than zero, we'll do this. At this point, I'll use an else if.
And finally, I'll just use an else. Save the post. Remember, this custom command only happens for linear moves, not circular or rapid moves. X greater than 20, greater than 20, greater than 20. less than 20, less than 0. To summarize, in this lesson you learned more about TCL command structure, specifically the if command. We created if commands, nested ifs, and else ifs. Finally, you learned a little about variable arrays. Thanks for viewing. In our next lesson, we will tackle more TCL concepts.